what is going on YouTube so coming back with a video today that's a little bit off the topic of free agency because I haven't talked about the topic of free agency or at least off of it in a little while for the NBA and I wanted to get off of it for a little bit I wanted to do a video that you know I feel like a lot of people are thinking about but not a lot of people have talked about like in depth at least on YouTube and that's is Brandon Ingram better than Ben Simmons from what we've seen so far, you know, they played tonight, or I guess last night technically, and you know what? It was a good showing, and it was what, it, to the max, it was what you expected. So back to the question, is Brandon Ingram better than Ben Simmons? My answer is definitely not. Now, I know if you watched my mock draft, oh, a month ago, I said that Brandon Ingram should be drafted ahead of Ben Simmons, and he might. It, it, it depends on your team's need. Man, I feel like this can the, the top two players in this draft, it wasn't talked about this much, but I feel like this might be one of the better top two players drafted in a long time. Like, in a long time. You know, they, they, they are two such different players. Brandon Ingram, a guy that has a ceiling as high as the sky. Like, it, his wingspan, his defensive potential, his ability to shoot, his ability to create separation, you know, his potential to drive, it's crazy. His athleticism is off the charts. And then you look at Ben Simmons, how unique of player he is at the four. The fact that he can play any position to facilitate one to four. Again, that's a very, very unique trait. You look at all the players that can play, the positions 1-4, to 1-5. to five. And he can play the 5. I mean, his, re his rebounding ability, if he can strengthen up, you know, get that NBA strength to be able to play in the paint, he can play the 5. You look at the players that can play 1-4, to four, as I was mentioning before. LeBron James, obviously. Kevin Durant, obviously. You want to dig a little bit, or a little bit deeper. 1-4, to four, Kawhi Leonard. Paul George. That's my opinion. Obviously, when you just want to look at the front too, it's or it's uh, Kevin Durant and LeBron James. But again, when you put yourself in that class, that's an elite class. That's a class that, hopefully for basketball, hopefully for the sake of the East, hopefully for the sake of no teams tanking anymore to the amount that the Sixers have tanked for the last oh three, three four years. The Simmons can be that guy that's like, holy shit, we finally got this guy. Let's go for it. We can, you know, compete in the East, not just compete, win in the East. Their front court right now, they got Jaleel Okafor, New Orleans Noel, Joel Embiid, and Ben Simmons. If you want to name me a better front court in the East, go ahead. I'm assuming there's one, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Off pure young talent, I can't think of anyone. If they, I mean, obviously, they're looking to trade Ja and uh, Nerlens Noel before the end of the offseason, but, man, I don't know if they can. Ben Simmons' combination of the ability to get triple-doubles, the ability to rebound, the ability to drive, the pretty much the ability to do everything but shoot. If you can learn to shoot, then it's, I don't know, I think it's game over. The granted, shooting is obviously one of the most important parts of being a great player in the NBA. And that was my reservation about Ben Simmons. I think any person that studied Ben Simmons a lot, that was their reservation about him. Could he ever shoot? Could he ever do that? The answer is yet to be told. LSU, he couldn't. I mean, LSU and the SEC outside of Kentucky, there wasn't much competition. You kind of had Florida. You kind of had Vanderbilt. Compared to, oh, the Big 12, the ACC... You didn't have much. They they got they got beat seventy one thirty eight in the in the SEC tournament by Texas A and M no less. A team that relied on a house more than anyone. Anyway, back to the question. You know, is Brandon Ingram better than Ben Simmons? And again, I still stick to no. But here's my advantage with Brandon Ingram. Again, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, just like, you know, the 10-second recap of what Brandon Ingram brings you. Here's my thing with Brandon Ingram. With the Lakers, you know, I always figured, you know, it's it, Brandon Ingram could really fit in anywhere. But 
I, I, you don't know what the Lakers need right now, man. What what are they trying? What are they trying to do? Where are they trying to go? What is any team that's going to sign Timothy Mozgov to four years, sixty four million, trying to do? You, know, you figure like it's it's time for the buses to give up that team. That's a separate entirely, or that's an entirely separate topic. You you could talk about that for days, but. You know, a projected starting five right now of God God knows who at center. Hopefully not Mozgov, but probably Mozgov. Even worse than Hibbert, and I did a, I've done multiple Hibbert rants because I was I'm a huge Pacers fan and you know, you remember Hibbert back in the day, he made famous the triple single of, you know, starting in a playoff game with the number one seed being a seven two center who just won defensive player of the year. Let me recap this for you. A seven foot two center who won Defensive Player of the Year, starting for the number one seed in a playoff game where you can clinch against the Washington Wizards team that's starting a center that's oh six ten six nine. He was matched up against Gortat for a little bit, but a lot of the games matched up against Nene in two thousand thirteen two thousand fourteen. Zero rebounds, zero points, zero assist, zero blocks. And they're starting a guy that I think is a downgrade over that. Granted, the rest of the lineup I think looks great. I mean, I think D'Angelo Russell, beside the whole Nick Young thing, I mean, that's just a personal thing. I think he's got potential. He hit a game-winning three today in Summer League, granted, in Summer League. Jordan Clarkson, I mentioned him, I think he's got a lot of potential as a scorer in the NBA. Julius Randle, I think he's got a lot of potential in the NBA as well, as long as he can reach it. That's all that Julius Randle's got left to do. Just work hard for summer, reach that potential, he's there. Brandon Ingram plays at the three. One to four, you've got a pretty good lineup that's a young lineup that can compete in the West for, oh, 10 years if you keep it together, if it matches its potential. you got to find a five. Man, the... it pisses me off to a certain degree if the Lakers sign Moscow for that much. I mean, yeah, Moscow back in the day, man, way back in the day before he went to the Cavs, was a decent center at one time. Last two years is not. I mean, this year he. If you guys saw the stat that he earned like eight to nine million, actually I think it was nine point one four million for every single. <laughs> Imagine that you get put in the finals and you just get what nine point one four million for every single point you score. That's what Mozgov got. Anyway, that's a Lakers rant for you. So that pretty much concludes this video. I talked about this for a long time just because it's a very interesting topic that I don't. You know. I'm going to do a search on YouTube to figure out how many people have actually done it. Either way, I mean, I'm still going to post the same video, but, um, you know, I feel like you should check it out too. See these, see these videos because who knows who else has posted this. It's, it's a fun topic to talk about. It's a fun to topic to listen about. It's a fun topic to, you know, study and see what happens. Will Brandon Ingram be better than Ben Simmons? I say no. You know what? It doesn't matter what I say until the season starts. So that's pretty much it. See ya.